a little bit how to prepare for what his counter is going to be. As you can see, I took out the, down that queen. Very important. You're not um, allowing the Zerg to make as much larva, and and that queen does tons of damage to Marines, especially early on. And once again, here we go. So I just start. He doesn't really react. He's not really sure what to do. He's surprised. And um, and this turns out to be like a really simple game, really straightforward. I just start taking out drones, and uh, and you know he tries to defend with some drones on the last few marines, but I've got marines coming in. One thing I did try to do with the overlord on the side, I remembered where he parked his overlord, so I sent like one marine out to go harass it a little bit out of the ones that I had streaming in because it looked like pretty solid. So you know that's game two, pretty cut and dry same kind of thing and as you can see like at the end of the replay here you know it's stopped but you can see that I've I've uh, I've put down a couple refineries you know so I'm trying to practice like transitioning there's a, there comes a point where you want to transition into having gas and then trans in and, and trying to get up um, a, a expansion so we'll go ahead and quit that replay And then we'll go ahead and load up the last one here in just a second. So yeah, once again, this is just fun little strategy I came up with. And you know, I've I've watched some like Day Nine Daily and and stuff like that, and I think it was TLO TLO that was experimenting with a five barracks push against Protoss, and that probably was where I got the idea to try something like that against Zerg because I just felt like as soon as I have something to attack Zerg with they usually are able to hit me um, and they usually have their their hatchery already up so initially I was just trying to figure out a way to like delay and destroy the hatchery without having to use a bunker um, a forward bunker because they seem to get taken out by even if you take your Zerg opponent by surprise and they're putting down the hatchery they're able to overwhelm the bunker pretty well and then counter you and it's pretty devastating at that point. So we're gonna unpause this game. I mean yeah, get it set up for the 10 second mark once again and this is uh, blistering stands and I'm posted up at the top right spawn there and my opponent as at the bottom left once again the third player and his name this time is Randy. So we're gonna unpause this in three two one unpause now I don't do it in this replay and I probably should have picked one that was better fit for it but on this what's unique about um, this map and, and some of the other maps is that you can blot wall off your expansion very easily your expansion with that that choke um, right in front to the west of my expansion point right there and that can be pretty useful doing this strategy but what I find is that uh, it takes a little longer for your SEVs to travel over there and then um, once you see an overlord especially like what's important is the overlord scouting you and there's so many ways into your base especially whenever you take that choke as uh, as your setup and so what's difficult is is keeping the overlord from scouting you now in this game particularly I made the mistake of making my barracks too far on the lip just to the to the west of where I'm setting up my uh, my racks choke point or my my ramp wall, and my idea for that was I was going to lift up my two barracks and then wall off the choke point for transitioning into a um, uh, an expansion and then defending that. But what I found is that the overlord is able to scout it pretty much right away. But this is an example of whenever I talked about, you know, the Zerg only has so many overlords, so they can only scout you so many different ways. And, you know, he didn't send out a drone this game to scout my ramp. Um, so he does end up seeing, and you'll see here in a second, he will he does end up seeing where I place my next two barracks. But what he doesn't see is he doesn't get a chance to get close enough to my ramp to see that I have three barracks. And two barracks is pretty, you know... It's not super duper standard, but you know what he's probably expecting is a, is a marine mo marauder push from those two racks. So it still puts my timing. You know his expected um, attack on me is going to be a little bit later because he expects me to get refineries and and all that uh, kind of thing to try and get marauders out. 
Now here I've completed my wall, I've got my first marine out, and here comes the first overlord. This is a great position, by the way, for zergling, zergs to put their overlord, because it's really hard to, like, uh, get a marine over there to take it out. So if we look at his his um, viewpoint, my, uh, Randy's viewpoint, then you can he can see that I have two marines. Now this should probably be alarm for him right now. Is I've got two marines out and he sees two barracks making, so he's got to know that I have a third barracks. So let's see what is he doing on his side. So right now he's already he throws down a spine crawler as soon as he saw those two marines. So he's really paying attention to what's going on. And I think I include this. Um, this replay is is valuable because in this replay I really do get scouted and I really do get found. And I think that's important to note because you can see how powerful the timing push is even when your opponent is expecting it. And and this once again Overlord's coming to huge play because right now he's supply blocked. Right now he knows that I'm probably rushing him and he's supply blocked so he can't really you know, get that stuff in that he wants to, you know, get those defenses up like he wants to. And, you know, he's already set down his hatchery, and he's trying to defend and throw down uh, spine crawlers. And spine crawlers can't be everywhere at once. And once again, you know, the power of the strategy is really not that you're, you know, making the Zerg not be able to have minerals, but really the power is, is that you're causing the Zerg to not be able to use those larvae how they want to and making them adjust from that. Once again, this one, I've learned to just totally not waste my time with that hatchery, and I went up to check out what my opponent has in his main, because that's going to tell me what his tech is. But then, on this replay specifically, I knew that he saw me, and I'm expecting that he's going to have the counter come at any time. So what I decided, instead of like popping all the way up in there, to see what's going on, was trying to take out the hatchery. And here comes the zerglings that I expect. And this is where the SCVs are so important because they're creating block. They're blocking for my marines. And they're making it so those zerglings couldn't surround me. And that's why I pulled back, utilizing the hatchery and the and the edge of that uh, cliff right there to make sure that the zerglings couldn't surround me. Now I still have um, marines coming in, and I'm still making harvesters. At this point, I'm ahead of my opponent on harvesters, because he's forced to make defense. He's forced to throw down um, drones on trying to make spine crawlers, and he's forced to make zerglings, and to keep up on the overlords that I've been taking out. And now he's blind. He doesn't know if I'm going to keep this push up or not. And so, you know, I do, because I peek up and I, it, on this game specifically, I didn't expect to take the kill right away, like I normally do whenever I do this rush, and it comes totally unexpected to Zerglings, or to the Zerg player. Um, so what I was planning on doing, I was planning on falling back and transi just transitioning into an expansion with, with bunkers uh, to defend against the counter. But what had happened was I did so much damage to his economy, and so much damage to his overlords, uh, that he wasn't able to continue to make defenses. And here he's a little upset that he he uh he lost this. He calls it noob shit. And that's one thing too, you know, that's uh people will say this is noob stuff and yeah it's frustrating and yeah it's it's annoying to be rushed like this, but it's part of StarCraft. It's a big part of StarCraft. You know, like pro players lose, you know, huge tournament matches because of stuff like this and it really as a Zerg player you really got to be scouting you really got to be saying you know what is that Terran player doing you know I need to make sure that Overlord can get in there if that Overlord can't get in there maybe I should think about posting a drone on a Zelnaga watchtower maybe I should think about you know postponing my expansion for just a little bit or maybe I should make like in this case he may have wanted to make that spine crawler at his ramp so that he can try and defend a little bit from the hatchery and um, or, uh, and his expansion. Um, and once again, you know, Zerg players, best way to counter this, pull all the drones you have, use your queen, and use your spine crawler, crawlers, but pull the drones because they, they absorb fire and they, they actually do quite a bit of damage to the Terrans. And you're going to keep your Zer Zerglings alive like that. You're going to keep your DPS units alive by allowing the drones to tank. You're going to lose a lot less drones you know, reacting quickly and effectively right away to this marine push by just pulling off, taking
taking out the marines, and then you have those drones so that you d you can s use your larva for the counterattack, and you can have resources to go into grabbing some banelings and maybe a couple roaches and counter pushing, and then you'll be able to win with counter push most likely. So that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed my first audio commentary. I hope I did okay. Go ahead and leave comments and concerns and whatever you think and, you know, flaming and all that great stuff. Um, if you like, take care.